Good evening, everyone. How are you? Happy Friday. <laughs> How do you feel that you made it to Friday? Good evening. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. How are you? Good evening. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> nice. Enjoy it's, your dinner. <laughs> it's the birthday of my mother. <laughs> Very close to your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 it was your birthday this week also right yeah <laughs> same time mm -hmm. all right enjoy let's see mm -hmm. Jorge, Maria Elena, how are you i driving again <laughs> oh but okay i'm listening all right Marielena, thank you are you gonna be a, a listener jorge also hi manuel how are you Hey, it's Friday and you're here, Manuel. I'm happy to see you. <laughs> you're in mute, Manuel. You're in mute. Está en mute, Manuel. <laughs> this is the first Friday that I see you, Manuel. <laughs> oh, teacher. <laughs> but, I'm, I'm, sorry. but I'm glad. I'm happy to see you. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. Happy yes. to see you, too. Yeah, as well. So... For tonight, we're going to start, we're just going to give a few minutes for the others. So in the meantime, we're going to start with the random conversation question, right? So let's see. <laughs> and for the random oh, conversation questions, I heard someone, sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you guys, instead of a random conversation question, I'm going to give you guys some idioms. All right. Instead of asking a random conversation question, tonight I'm gonna share some idioms with you, okay? Okay. Okay. So we have first one in here, just a minute. Can you see the screen already? Yes, teacher. All yes. Right. All right, so we have the first one in here. I'm not gonna show you this ones because these are like two basics. But then this one's here we start. Okay. So let's hear, let's read number five. Who can help me read it with example? Me, teacher. All right. Help me, please, Manuel. Okay. Everything but the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. Almost everything has been included. Example Maria was trying so, so hard to get the question right. She was throwing out, throwing out everything but the kitchen sink. Correct. So this is an expression that people use in mostly native speakers use the idioms, right? And it means almost everything has been included, right? For example, if you ask me, Miss, do you have everything for your trip? Well, I have everything but the kitchen sink, right? And I'm saying, yes, I have almost everything that I need, right? So you can use it in different contexts. It, it really doesn't matter the context. But if you're trying to say almost everything has been included in something, this is the expression. This is how you say it, okay? Everything but the kitchen sink. Uh, sink. Everything but the kitchen sink. Richard, this is a, uh, that is a idiom. It is an idiom, yes. Okay. Como un dicho, right? And it means, yeah. significa justo esto, casi todo ha sido incluido, right? And again, you can use it in all different, all types of contexts. Now, I want you to make a sentence and try to include that idiom in your sentence, okay? Like the example I gave you, como el ejemplo que les acabo de dar, right? Si a mí me preguntan, Miss, do you have everything ready for your trip? Well, yes, I have everything but the kitchen sink. So you saying así, casi todo ya, right? Almost everything. So I'm going to give you two minutes and I want you to create a sentence incorporating that idiom. This one, everything but the kitchen sink. Hagan una oración, incorporen ese dicho.
What medium teacher? El que está en pantalla, Wendy. Everything but the kitchen sink. Everything. Oh, okay. All right, if you already finished your sentence, raise your hand and I want to hear it. Manuel, please go ahead. Okay. When I visited my grandmother, mom asked everything but the kitchen sink. Again, Manuel? Okay. When I visited my grandmother, mom asked me. Everything but the kitchen sink. All right. Um, pero te traduzcamos lo que me quiere decir ahí, Manuel. Cuando visité a mi, a mi abuela, mamá preguntó que si todo estaba. Ah, entonces, uh -huh. my mom asked if everything but the kitchen sink was, was ready, por ejemplo. Everything? If everything but the kitchen sink was ready. Ah, uh -huh. okay. If, Solo agregarle el was ready. If everything but the kitchen sink was ready. Okay, que no, es que no está completa, entonces. No, uh -huh. no, no, uh -huh. no. Sí está bien aplicada, pero le falta completarla eso con was ready. Okay. Si sí estaba todo. Uh -huh. Other than that, very good, Manuel. It sounded good. Thank you. Let's hear. Who else has a sentence already? Me teacher. Okay. okay, let me hear it, please. I did a question and answer. Okay. Um, have you made the arrangement to the party? Yes, I had everything but the kitchen sink yesterday. Perfect. Yes, that is one option. Another option, like, like the one Manuel gave, was a totally different context, and this is a totally different context. It's exactly what I was telling you guys. You can use it in different situations, right? And it will always mean this. Almost everything has been included. Different context, same meaning. Very good one. That was a very clever one. Um, who else has the sentence already? ¿Quién más tiene su oración ya lista? Veamos, usando ese idioma. Let me see. Juan Carlos, do you have your sentence ready? Juan Carlos Rivas, do you have your sentence ready? It's number six, teacher. Um, number five. Five. Yes. Everything, but the, but, the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. everything but the kitchen sink. Almost everything has been included. Eso quiere decir este idioma. Cuando yo digo everything but the kitchen sink, estoy diciendo todo, casi todo. Casi todo. Mm -hmm. Cuando decimos casi, bueno, ya tengo todo, pero solo me falta esto. Mm -hmm. Exacto, a eso okay. se refiere. Uh -huh. How would you make it in a sentence? Podría ponerlo en una oración ese dicho, Juan. Okay. I will be only like listening because I have to do some reports. Ok, Mario. Ajá, Juan Carlos. Bueno, ya... Es lo que les decía, pueden usarlo en cualquier contexto, en cualquier situación. En vez de decirle a alguien, tengo todo casi incluido. Pueden, no, en general, en Estados Unidos, en cualquier, cualquier país donde se habla inglés nativo, no les van a decir eso. Les van a decir el este, esta expresión. I have everything but the kitchen sink. Y les están dando a entender eso. Right? So it's really important that you guys start using them in conversation, right? So that when you get to the advanced level, you are already, already incorporating those things for conversation, right? And then okay. we have number seven. I wanna share number seven with you. This one is kinda easy also. Um, I don't know, someone can help me read it please, number seven. Uh, Wendy, please. Uh -huh. El anterior? Uh -huh. El anterior tenía una, tenía una oración. Dígale, Wendy, le escuchamos. Este es algo. I marry, I marry, no sé cómo es, Marian. Uh -huh. I married next, it's correct, I married next year. 
No, married ya están pasados. Sería el last year, el año pasado. Last year. Uh -huh. I got no, married last no. year. Es que, quiero, no, es que quiero como el futuro. Entonces, I will marry. Así. I will get married. I will get married uh -huh. next year. Everything uh -huh. but the kitchen sink. Less the boyfriend. Uh -huh. Entonces, everything but the kitchen sink, pero no ocupado un verbo. ¿Qué verbo ocuparía? Para, para no. conectar esa oración. Para conectar. No, uh -huh. eso es lo que no, no sé. Por eso le quería preguntar. En español usted diría tengo todo Ajá. menos. Tengo Ajá, casi exacto, todo incluido. Como un, ¿Cuál es como el verbo tener? Have. Ajá, entonces, ¿cómo diría? I have. I will marry. I will uh -huh. marry. Marry, ¿verdad? ¿eh? Ajá. Get married. Year, every, every, get married next year. Everything I have. But the kids, I have. I, uh -huh. I sí. have. El verbo siempre va antes. But, ah, eso no entendí. I have everything but the kitchen sink, less the boyfriend. Except the boyfriend. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> de hecho, lo que plantea Wendy es una pregunta bastante válida. Los idioms, por ser dichos, son expresiones que tienen su significado aparte pero no necesariamente son verbos, no necesariamente son un verbo. Entonces, si, tengo, si veo que la expresión no contiene un verbo, sé que lo puedo combinar con diferentes. Por ejemplo, Juan de Dios dijo, um, for the party, right? Juan de Dios dijo, I have everything but the kitchen sink, right? Yes, Juan? yes. Manuel said, my mother asked me if everything but the kitchen sink was ready, okay? Se puede combinar con diferentes verbos porque esta solo es una expresión. Ahora bien, hay, otro de, hay otros dichos que ya incluyen un verbo, como el número 7. ¿Quién me ayuda a leerlo con el ejemplo? The me. sentence. All right, let me hear it, please. To have a cross iron stomach. To have no problems eating or drinking anything. Example, I think I would be sick if I... Ate all that food, but Joy seemed to have a cause iron stomach. Very good. Okay. Este dicho ya lleva un verbo incorporado. To have a cast iron stomach. All right. Este tú puede variar, pero el verbo have no se le va a quitar jamás. Siempre va a ir incluido. Entonces, en este ejemplo, I think I would be sick if I ate all that food. Yeah. But Joe seems to have a cast iron stomach. Yo puedo decir... I can eat all the food in this party because I have a cast iron stomach, right? Siempre va a ir con el verbo have. Sí o sí, va a ir con el verbo have. Okay? Now, what you're going to do right now, it's the same exercise. Van a escribir una oración en la que incorporen este dicho ustedes. Okay? To have a cast iron stomach. Es como el equivalente a tener un estómago... No sé cómo se diría en español. No se traduce literal. Sé que en español tenemos uno. Cuando alguien puede comer sin problemas y nada le hace daño. Como de hierro. Ay, de animal o de hierro. <risa> Yo no he escuchado que lo digamos así en español. Creo que hay un equivalente. Pero si lo fuéramos a interpretar sería eso. Ten, tener un estómago de hierro. Right? So. Para ir sin fondo. Exactly. <risa> exactly. Esos son los equivalentes que tenemos acá. No se van a interpretar. Si hay un equivalente en español, no se traduce literal. Um, hay otro idioma, por ejemplo, que nosotros decimos cuando alguien está muy apenado, decimos, um, se siente como pollito comprado, ¿ok? Pero en inglés sería like a fish out of the water, ¿ok? Pero no lo voy a traducir como pez fuera del agua, lo voy a traducir como el equivalente en mi país, ¿ok? So that's the thing, en este caso. So, vamos a hacer una oración utilizando to have a cast iron stomach. Tener un estómago de hierro. Try to incorporate it in one sentence. And when you're ready, let me know so I can hear your sentence.
Okay, let me end your sentences, guys. Yo les había dado mi ejemplo. I can eat everything in this party because I have a iron stomach, right? How would you use it? ¿Qué ejemplo hicieron ustedes? I want to hear it. Los que ya lo completaron su oración, levanten la mano y lo vamos a escuchar. Let's hear Juan de Dios, please. Okay. I would like to eat a lot of a lot of food, but I not have a cause around the stomach. <laughs> but I don't have a cause around the stomach. That's a perfect example, Juan. Thank you. Who else? Let me hear your sentences. Olga, do you have a sentence? No yet, teacher. Okay. Manuel, please. Okay. Uh, yesterday, I celebrate my birthday and my mother prepared different dishes and I ate so much. And my brother said, you have a cast iron stomach. Very good. <laughs> Very creative example. Thank you, Manuel. That was a very good one. Okay, let's see who else. Um, Tatiana, do you have a sentence ready? Do you have a sentence ready? Um, oh, where is she? Christian, do you have a sentence ready? Uh, yes, but I think my sentence is too long. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let me hear it. Uh, I don't know if it's okay, but I write, I wrote, I want to taste, to taste bugs because in China they eat it and it's perfect because I have a cast iron stomach. <laughs> that, but that's a good one. Yes, it's applicable. Very good, Christia. And listen, that is the point. At the end of the day, you will use these idioms when you are in conversations. So it's good that you can create examples like that, how you would put it in a conversation, right? Okay, so those are the ones, the two ones that I want you to remember for tonight. Voy a tratar de irle incorporando al menos dos cada día, yes? Teacher, I'm sorry, and the number six? To number put what? a sock in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can talk about this one. Um, who wants to read it? Who wants to read number six? Me, teacher. Let me hear okay. it. Okay. To put a sock in it. To tell someone not to, see, to be quiet. Example. Jane was yelling while, while I was studying. So I told her to put a sock in it. Very good. So to put a sock in it is el equivalente a decirle a alguien, cállese la boca, <laughs> right? Que, se, que guarde silencio. Que guarde silencio, que no haga ruido, okay? To put a sock in it. Vuelvo y repito, el to a veces va a estar y a veces no. Pero el verbo put siempre va a ir acompañándolo a este. Este es otro ejemplo mm -hmm. donde el idiom ya lleva su verbo, okay? Um, and you see this one. Jane was yelling while I was studying. Ella estaba gritando cuando yo estaba estudiando, así que le dije que se callara, right? Que guardara silencio. To put a sock in it, right? No tienen que decir put a sock in your mouth, no. <laughs> la expresión ya es así, put a sock in it. Y se sobreentiende que están refiriéndose a la boca, right? So basically telling someone to be quiet, right? I can say my students in the morning were really loud. So I told them to put a sock in it while they were in the exam, right? So try to make a sentence with that uh, idiom. Tratando de incorporar un, una oración, este idioma en una oración. Donde le piden a alguien que por favor <laughs> guarde silencio. You have two minutes.
Let me hear your sentences, Christia, please. Okay. When I was in a meeting work, I wanted to tell something and my coworker told me to put a sock in it. <laughs> kind of loose. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> to hear that, Christia, but it was a good example. Thank you. Juan de Dios, please. Uh, the coworker were laughing this afternoon, but I told their to put a sock in it. <laughs> you don't like them to laugh. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> now, I want you to put attention to one thing. You, you are using it in different tenses. Si se fijaron, lo pueden incorporar en diferentes tiempos gramaticales. No importa si están hablando presente, pasado, futuro. Los idioms, ustedes lo incorporan realmente. No es que sean gramáticas, son frases que ustedes pueden incorporar. Si es un idioma que ya lleva un verbo, Solo lo adaptan al tiempo gramatical en que lo necesitan. So very good. Who else has a sentence with that one? ¿Quién más tiene una oración con eso? Let me hear it, please. Let's see. Me, teacher. Let me hear it, Manuel, please. In the meeting, the boss said to put a sock in it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Only he was going to talk. <laughs> that was a good one, Manuel. Thank you. Very good job, guys. So you have three idioms that you can incorporate in normal conversation, okay? Um, el punto con los idioms es que siempre busquen momentos para incorporarlos. Cuando estén haciendo conversaciones, traten de incorporar alguno de esos. Because it is, they are used regularly when you speak with native speakers. They use them very regularly, okay? So let me go to the student's manual. Let me share with you guys one moment. Just a moment. Okay, here we go. So before, oh no, this is not what I wanted to show. It's this one. We're going to talk about tag questions. Do you know something about tag questions, guys? I was I was read, reading mm -hmm. in my in my manual said in question tags is a is a word we use tag uh, questions uh huh it's a word it's a word we we can use in a sentence. Uh, for change uh, the the time. Mm, not to change the time, but we use it. It is a it is a couple of words that we can use when we're talking. Again, okay. at this level, guys, you have to start training yourself for talking. Right? You are intermediate, going to advance already. So at this level, you have to start practicing more talking as much as possible. And okay. Part of regular conversation, así como los idioms que acabamos de ver, 
a very, very common part of normal conversation are the tag questions, okay? So I need a person to help me read this paragraph, please. Another one is going to help me read this one. And then another person is gonna help me read this. Bueno, solo dos personas, okay? Um, Juan de Dios, help me with this part, introduction, hasta acá, la nota. Y luego los últimos examples sería Cristia, please. Okay. Tag questions, introduction. A tag question is a small question that, uh, that is attached or tagged to the end of a sentence rather than re repeat the, the main verb, a form of be or other auxiliary verb or, or modal is used in the tag. Below are a few examples. You came by train, didn't you? It's very windy today, isn't it? You can meet me at the station, can you? You couldn't give me a ride, could you? Sentence parent. If the sentence is negative, the tag is usually positive as in the example below. You didn't tell him, did you? Not okay. sentences with negative words are considered to be negative. Therefore, they require positive tag question endings as in this examples. Yeah, okay, good. examples. He never drinks alcohol, does he? Nobody left a message this day. If the sentence is positive, the tag is usually negative, as in the next example. You told him, didn't you? Very good, thank you. Okay, we will start talking about the rules. How and when do you use the tag questions, right? Hay una para cada escenario. However, this part is the introduction, right? Um, listen, basically, se le llama tag question porque es una pregunta corta que va al final de la oración por lo general. Right? Es como un adjunto, entonces se dice tag question, okay? So instead of you repeating the main verb or a form of the verb to be, you can use the tag question, right? For example, you came by train and then pay attention to this one. You came by train, didn't you? Right? So the tag question, it's like asking for a confirmation of some sort, okay? It is very windy today, isn't it? Right? And then it says, you can meet me at the station, can you? Intonation is going to be really important when you're using tag questions, okay? Um, no es lo mismo si usted dice, you came by train, didn't you? No está haciendo ningún cambio. A que usted diga, you came by train. Pausa, didn't you? Right? The intonation when you use the tag questions, let the other person know that you want confirmation, okay? And then, esta parte es importante. If the sentence is negative, the tag is usually positive. You didn't tell him, did you? Right? So the sentence is negative, the tag question will be positive for confirmation. Y esto es bien parecido al español como, pero no le dijiste, ¿verdad? Okay, so that's the same way as you didn't tell him, did you? Right? And then, hay oraciones en inglés que llevan palabras negativas, como las oraciones donde ocupamos never o nobody. Esas palabras son negativas, pero no llevan auxiliares negativos como do not, did not, has not, no llevan el not. Ok, pero never y nobody son negativas. Entonces, si la oración lleva una de esas, van a hacer la pregunta en positivo. Igual que si tuviera un auxiliar negativo. Right? So, you can say, he never drinks alcohol. Does he? Nobody left a message. Did they? Ok, son las oraciones donde va alguna palabra de esas, es igual a una negativa y por tanto usted... El tag question lo va a hacer positivo. 
and vice versa, okay? Vice versa. So there are 12 rules that you can follow. Esto es como bien resumido, así que les va a ser la vida más fácil para que ustedes sepan qué pregunta usar y cuándo usar. So I'm gonna need 12 volunteers to read. Una para cada uno. Levanten la mano para irse las asignando. Solo van a leer en ahorita. And, and 12 volunteers. Ocupo 12, así que casi todos van a tener que levantar la mano en esta. Solo los que están oyentes, quizás no. Ok. Um, let's hear. Manuel, you will read number one. Acuérdense que leen la regla y el ejemplo. Ok. Um, Cristian, number two. Juan de Dios, number three. Olga Marleni, number four. Wendy, number bueno, five. Bueno. Ana Bye. Raquel, number six. Y nos vamos a quedar hasta el número seis ahorita con Ana. Veamos, iniciamos. After let's, the tag begins with show. Let's, let's invite the neighbors over for dinner on the weekend, shall we? All right. If you have a sentence that you need to use let's, si en una oración ustedes han utilizado el let's, o sea, vamos a, para hacer el tag question, va a utilizar shall we. Sí o sí va a utilizar este, ¿ok? Si la oración lleva un let's, shall we es el tag question que le corresponde, ¿ok? Um, let's make a party tomorrow, shall we? ¿Ok? Let's go to the dentist together, shall we? ¿Ok? Right. So, mm -hmm. so you are not going to use an equivalent of let's. Mm -mm. You're going to use shall we. All right. ¿Por qué siempre va a ser shall we? Porque let's ya está en plural. Let us. Okay. Therefore, we use it with shall we. And now, before we read the number two, everybody makes a sentence, please. Todos hagan una pregunta usando let's, la oración, y el tag question que le corresponde. Así como les acabo de decir yo ahorita, por ejemplo. Let's make a party tomorrow, shall we? Make your sentence. Tienen los dos minutos para hacer su oración con su tag. Y esta vez yo voy a preguntarles. So everybody please be ready with a sentence. Tienen dos minutos. Shall we? Ok, I'm gonna start asking. Voy a empezar a pedir las oraciones. Vamos a iniciar con Silvia Suleima, por favor. Uh, let's invite, no, uh, perdón. The, let's the party tomorrow. Let's so have the... a party tomorrow. Or let's throw a party. Después de let's hay que poner un verbo, Silvia. Sí. Uh, let's go. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Let's go to a party tomorrow. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's go to the party tomorrow, shall we? Perfect. Very good, Silvia. Thank you. Um, let's see. 
Juan Carlos, do you have a sentence? Juan Carlos Rivas, are you there? Do you have your sentence ready? No, teacher, not yet. Okay, let's see. Jose Rodrigo, do you have your sentence ready? Jose Rodrigo, do you have your sentence? Okay, and let me check with Wendy. Wendy, do you have your sentence? Try, teacher, bro. I don't understand clearly. <laughs> Uh, okay, Bam. Let's go. Let's go vacation. Only. Mm -hmm. Y el tal? Tal. Show. Mm -hmm. Shall we? Shall we? Okay. All right, Wendy. Está bien. Eh, está bien siempre. El ejemplo está bien. Pero siempre que no entienda, necesito que me diga para yo repetirlo o buscar otra forma de explicárselo. Pero no se quede sin entender, ¿de acuerdo? De acuerdo. All right. Okay. Let's go. Let's read rule number two, please. Uh, use aren't I in tax to mean I am not. Example, I'm on time. Aren't I? I'm on time. I'm. I'm. Mm -hmm. I. Yes. I'm. I. It's the first no. time that I hear that. Créanlo <laughs> o no, hay gente que inventó eso y está incorrecto. También I'm está la otra opción. Si ustedes dicen, por ejemplo, I am happy. Y quizás para hacer el tag, por lógica, ustedes dirían, ah, lo voy a pasar negativo. I am, I am happy. happy. Am I not? Y suena que tiene lógica, ¿verdad? I am happy. Am I not? Pero nos está diciendo que la forma correcta es aren't I. Si usted hace una oración con I am not, primera persona negativa, I am not, para hacer el tag, siempre va a ser aren't I. ¿Okay? No va a decir am I not. No va a preguntar de otra manera con el no. Va a preguntar aren't I. ¿Okay? That's the legal version. Y esta es una, esta tag en particular, es uno que delata casi siempre a la gente que está aprendiendo inglés. Cuando un nativo le escucha a usted que ocupa correctamente esto, se sorprende, porque casi la gente se lo olvida porque no lo practica. Y a la hora de usar un tag en esta o con primera persona negativa, ocupan am I not, solo cambian el am I de posición. Y eso está incorrecto. Entonces ustedes tienen que usar aren't I. ¿Okay? Yo le puedo decir, I am, I am really busy right now. Aren't I? O si yo le pregunto a alguien, I am really busy, aren't I? ¿Ok? ¿Nunca van a ocupar am I not? Mm -mm. No. Ni ninguna otra versión. Sería aren't I. El tal vez que le corresponde. Si me repito, si la oración es primera persona negativo, I am not. El tag question sería aren't I? ¿Ok? Y es el equivalente a no lo soy o no estoy. ¿Verdad? Por ejemplo... Yo estoy bien ocupada ahorita, o no, ¿verdad? Ese o no es el tal question, ¿verdad? Que no me dice que estoy bien ocupada. Yes? Go ahead. And we said, and we said uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. No, pero I'm not sure. Ahí no necesitas confirmar con alguien. Ah, <ríe> um, ok. Las tal questions, eh, las tal questions son específicamente cuando se requiere confirmación. Pero si usted dice, oh, I, am not, okay. I am not sure, ya usted está confirmando que no está seguro. <risa> Esos ah, son okay. específicamente para esos escenarios en que usted necesita como que se reconfirme lo que usted está diciendo. Es como si oh. yo en español le dijera, viene mi jefe y piensa que estoy jugando. <risa> Entonces yo le digo, no, si estoy súper ocupada. Y le pregunto a mi compañero, ¿verdad? Estoy súper ocupada, jefe, ¿verdad? ¿Es verdad? O decir, oh no. Es esa tal question, aren't I? Ok. En okay. mm -hmm. that escenario, es how you use that. So, everyone, I want you to make a sentence using that tag question. Haga una oración que esté en primera persona negativo, I am not, y ocupen el tag que le corresponde. Tienen dos minutos.
Okay, if you heard the sentence, let me hear it, please. Vamos a ver. Um, Cristia, do you have it? Yes. Um, I'm cooking now, aren't I? Perfect. Yes, that's that's a good example. Okay. Thank you. Olga, please. Okay. I am very light. Let and I. <laughs> Thank you, Olga. That's a good sentence. Um, Anna, do you have a sentence for that one? Yes. Uh, I am not on vacation, aren't I? <laughs> Very good. I am not on vacation, aren't I? Very good. Um, let me check the next one. Number three. Do we have someone to read? Okay, let me read this. Use want for polite request tags. Sample, you'll bring the other things, won't you? Very good. So, for polite request tags, cuando ustedes están haciendo una petición, cuando ustedes están solicitando algo o pidiendo algo, ustedes van a hacer una oración afirmativa usando will, un futuro simple, will. Y el tag question que van a usar es en negativo, ¿ok? Dice want, es el que voy a utilizar para solicitudes o peticiones, ¿ok? Aunque yo voy a hacer la oración afirmativa con will, para confirmarla voy a utilizar el tag en negativo, ¿ok? Miren el ejemplo. You will bring the other things, won't you? ¿ok? Y por lo general con ese tipo de preguntas ya se sabe la respuesta, pero se trata de comprometer a la otra persona. Right? So, for example, um, you will pick me up at the airport, won't you? Right? You will pick me up at the airport, won't you? So, write a sentence right now using that one, please. Hagan su oración utilizando ese, por favor. You have two minutes. You will do this task, won't you? Exactly. <laughs> The, casi que obligando, right? You will do this task, won't you? Like that. Somebody else has a sentence ready? Let me see. Me teacher. Let me hear it, please. Uh, you will invite me the lunch, won't you? Exactly. <laughs> you will invite me to lunch, won't you? Very good. I know that was a good one. Um, let's see. Manuel, do you have your tag question? Uh, you will go by bus. You won't. Al revés. Won't you? <laughs> won't you? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. You will go by bus, won't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cuando no le quiere dar raid a alguien, usted le pregunta, you will go by bus, won't you? <laughs> Very good. Cristia, please. Uh, my brother will clean the house, won't he? Exactly. <laughs> yes, usted diciéndole a su mamá que no le toca a usted. <laughs> Very good. Con esa casi que se compromete la otra persona, basically. Olga, do you have a sentence with that one? Yes, teacher. Okay. They'll play the other Saturday. Well, I no estoy segura de tienen que ser siempre they. Well, um, they. El they, yeah, pero repita la oración original, Olga, por favor. They'll play the other Saturday. Next Saturday. They'll play next Saturday. Uh -huh. ah, next. Uh -huh. next Saturday. Well, One they? day, exactly, correct. Okay. Yes, el tal question siempre va a ir según el sujeto que se ocupa en la oración original. Very good. Um, Silvia, do you have a sentence with that one? Mm. Mm. No sé si está bien, eh. Es parecido a lo de Olga. Y Chile. 
Se le cortó, si le da una mesa. Se le cortó, así que repítela, por favor. Uh, she'll play soccer on Friday. Uh -huh. on her. No sé. She, won't she? Ah, won't she. Es el mismo sujeto de, de la, la oración. Sí. Sí, sí, ya está okay. correcto. All right, let me hear number four, please. Someone please read number four. Okay. Just will. Uh... Ah, pensé que era mí. Um, ¿Quién estaba leyendo? Leyó sí. Juan, Juan de Dios, creo que leyó. La tres. Ah, Olga, yes. léame, ayúdeme con la cuatro y Silvia me ayuda con la cinco, por favor. Después. Ana okay. tiene la número seis, ¿verdad? Ok. Ok. Use will or will with an imperative sentence. Commands. Example. Wait here until I return with you. Wait here until I return with you. Ok. Cuando ustedes hagan oraciones imperativas o den órdenes, commands, cuando ustedes den órdenes, pueden escoger entre will o would para el, para el tag question. Ok. Yo le estoy diciendo a alguien, espérame aquí hasta que yo regrese. ¿Lo harás? Ok. Entonces, wait here until I return. Will you? O pueden decir, would you? Cualquiera de las dos está correcto. Ok. Um, I can tell you guys, you, like an order, ok. Complete the platform by tonight at midnight. Would you? Ok. Cuando se da una orden, pueden utilizar cualquiera de los dos auxiliares, will o would, con el tag question. Right? Este escenario es específicamente para órdenes, ¿ok? O con oraciones estrictas. Now, write your own sentence. Escriban su propia versión de una orden o una, o una oración como estricta. Y el tag que quieran puede ser will you o would you. Okay. Put it hearing? on the next table. Will you? Very well, good. That's a good one. <laughs> Another one who has the sentence complete, please. Me. Let me hear it, please. Do the homework this weekend. Will you? Perfect. Thank you. Olga? Do your homework in the morning. Would you? Perfect. <laughs> Next. Um, Wendy, please. Wendy, oh, después okay. Manuel. Uh -huh. Okay. Other, other, uh, other sentences or write five? <laughs> I don't remember. Estamos en la número cuatro, Wendy. Ah, que a mí me tocaba leer las cinco. Uh, okay. Okay. You will go to work. Would you? Very good, Wendy. Thank you. And Manuel, please. Okay. The coach. The the coach request me. You have to pay attention. Will you? <laughs> good one, Manuel. That's a good one. Thank you, Maria Elena. Please. Go to the bed. Would you? Perfect, exactly. Así es como le van a utilizar esta tag question. En esos escenarios cuando damos órdenes. Very good. Wendy, please, tenía el número 5 y dice, please help me with it. I tried the example. Okay. You, you must, 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 mm -hmm. use must with the model must. In my example, I tried. I must, I must get up early. Must I? Ok, very good. This must, específicamente el mustn negativo, 
específicamente con las oraciones donde ocupamos más. ¿Cuándo voy a ocupar más en una oración? Básicamente cuando también estoy diciendo que algo se debe hacer, algo debe pasar, sí o sí. Que ir más es casi obligación de algo. Ok. Por ejemplo, I must exercise every morning. Mustn't I? Right? Yo debo hacer ejercicio cada mañana. O no. Right? So that's the way. Siempre que ustedes tengan una oración afirmativa donde ocupen más, el tal question que van a utilizar es la versión negativa. Mustn't. El sujeto va a cambiar. Ok. Um, en este caso, si se fijan, dice. This must be the address. Esta debe ser la dirección. Como están hablando de una cosa, ocupan it. Mustn't it. All right. Pero si estuviéramos hablando de personas, ocupamos el sujeto. Como la que yo les dije. I must exercise every morning. Mustn't I? Okay. And let's make a sentence with that one. Hagamos una oración usando más. Y más en, en el tal question, please. Okay, this must be the best way, mustn't it? Perfect, yes, because you're speaking about something, you use it in the question tag. Very good. Thank you, Juan de Dios. Let's see who else has the sentence ready. ¿Quién más ya tiene su oración? Wendy, no repite la que me dio, por favor. Okay. Um, I must get up early. Mustn't, mustn't I? Very good. Si quiero confirmación de que tengo que levantarme temprano, esa es la pregunta, right? I must get up early, mustn't I? Right? Esperando que me digan lo contrario. <laughs> no, you must not. <laughs> me too. All right, good. All right, and then last one, number six, Anna, please. Wendings are possible when hat is the main verb of the sentence. Example, you have enough money, haven't you? You have enough money, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, British version, haven't you? American version, don't you? Okay, las dos son válidas y las dos se pueden. Okay, um, si se acuerdan por lo general, en, en versión americana utilizamos el don't you o el do you en preguntas, en simple, present, ok. En inglés británico pueden utilizar el mismísimo auxiliar, have it, you, <ríe> ok. So, si, la, si el verbo have está en la versión afirmativa, ustedes escogen cuál de los dos pueden, los dos están correctos, ok. Um, y esto es por la regla de presente simple, en inglés americano. Si se acuerdan, ustedes pueden decir, I have enough money, ¿ok? Y si le pregunto, digamos a Cristia, Cristia, do you have enough money? Ella me puede decir, yes, I do, o oh, no, I don't. Por eso es que en la versión americana ocupan el auxiliar don't para el tag question, ¿ok? En la versión um, británica ustedes pueden decir, yes, en vez de decir yes, I do, pueden decir yes, I have money. O en vez de decir, no, I don't, dicen, no, I haven't any money. Parece extraño, pero así lo hablan ellos. Mi recomendación, quédense con la versión americana. Es la que se habla más ampliamente. Ok. So, again, si tienen una oración afirmativa con el verbo have, pueden utilizar cualquiera de estos dos en el tag question. Les voy a dar un minuto para que hagan su pregunta, su oración y su pregunta con el tag. Ah, Marielena, no había visto la suya. They must deliver the report de la número 5. Mustn't they? That is correct, Marielena. It was good.
when you finish your sentence, let me know so we can hear it. Yes. Okay. She have sufficiently time, don't she? Uh -huh. ¿Cuál es la auxiliar para she? Her. Her. Does. But they don't? Does. Doesn't. Doesn't. Doesn't her. Doesn't she? Uh -huh. Doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Doesn't she? Right. She has sufficient time, doesn't she? Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Olga, you please. Tell me time on it. Olga, please, the sentence. Okay. They have many experience, doesn't they? Mm. They is plural, sería do. O sea, do don't. They? Don't they? Don't. Mm -hmm. Don't they? Yes. Acuérdense que el doesn't solo va a ser para he, she, it. Todos los demás va a ser don't. Okay. okay. Very good, Olga. Thank you. Manuel, please. Okay. You have a beautiful house, don't you? Perfect. You have a beautiful house, don't you? Correct. Do we have another one? Do we have another sentence? I have the one. Is it me? Uh, we have a we have a lot of work, don't we? Perfect, <laughs> like that. We have a lot of work, don't we? All right. So, this is behind. I don't remember. Yeah. Hemos visto seis de esas. Um, una parte importante que necesito que veamos. Le voy a pasar el link. Este link se lo voy a pasar por el grupo de WhatsApp para que ustedes terminen de ver las demás reglas. O las podemos ver el lunes para que no estén el pin en eso. Las podemos ver el lunes. Um, pero esta parte sí es importante. Necesito a alguien que me ayude con esta lectura. Y de ahí tres personas más. Cada una va a leer uno de esos. Rising tone, rising tone, falling tone. Okay. So I need four volunteers for reading. Okay, let me hear. Let me check. Okay, Wendy me ayuda leyendo la introducción. Acá. Luego, mm -hmm. Cristian me ayuda leyendo la primera. Rising tone, asking for a favor. Manuel me ayuda con la segunda. Rising tone for information. Y ocupo una persona más que lea la última, por favor. Let's see, one more volunteer. Let me check. Juan de Dios, help me with the third one. Falling tone, asking for agreement. Now, noten una cosa. Cuando dice rising tone, les está diciendo que ustedes van a elevar su tono de voz en la pregunta. En el tag, al final, ustedes elevan la voz. Si dice falling tone, dice que bajan la voz al preguntar al final. Ok, vamos a leer. Wendy, please. Ok, using tal question. Tal questions are used to ask to agreement or, the, or to ask to think, favors or new information to determine which listen to the speaker. Um, sorry, I didn't think of it. Speaker's tone. A rising tone at rising. the end. Sorry? A rising, rising. tone. Mm -hmm. Sorry. A rising tone at the end, the end of a tall question indicates that it is a real question. The speaker wants what, to know something or wants someone don't want to do something follow tone falling following falling tone falling falling tone however means that the speaker is looking for agreement all right thank you okay. rising tone asking for a favor you couldn't lend me some money could you Perfect. Rising tone. La voz se levanta un poquito. Could you? Thank you. Number two. Rising tone. Asking for information. You don't happen to know if the no is the number. 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 50 boss has already passed here. Do you? Uh -huh. Y esa parte bien importante, que marquemos la voz en alto en la pregunta. You don't happen to know if the number 50 bus already passed here, do you? Okay, number three. 
Fallington. Fallington. The boss was in, in a good mood today. Was he? Mm -hmm. That dress looks great on her. Doesn't it? Correct. Very good. <laughs> si se fijan, cuando ustedes elevan la voz, suena casi como se están afirmando. Pero cuando preguntan, eh, cuando bajan el tono de voz, suena como si necesitan asegurar. All right? Entonces nos dice, the speaker wants to know something, um, a rising tone. At the end of that question indicates that it is a real question. Okay? You could lend me some money. Could you? All right? Este tipo de preguntas donde yo levanto un poquito la voz al final, ya sea para pedir favores o información, levanto la voz porque estoy esperando una respuesta, necesito que me contesten, right? Y a la otra nos dice que estamos esperando cuando bajamos el tono de voz, como lo que la que acaba de hacer Juan de Dios, hacemos el tal y bajamos un poquito la voz porque no queremos información, solo queremos confirmación, que alguien esté de acuerdo con nosotros, ¿ok? Como, por ejemplo, este. That dress looks great on her. Doesn't it? Right? Estamos esperando que confirmen, que estén de acuerdo con nosotros. Que estén de acuerdo con nosotros. Right? Now, this is only, only going to come with practice. Subir o bajar el tono de voz en el tag question solo viene con, por naturalidad con la práctica. All right? Do we have questions so far? Preguntas hasta ahorita con las tags. Yes, no. Okay, if there are no questions, voy a asumir que todos entendieron lo que hemos visto hasta ahorita. Teacher, I yeah. have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, when are we use tag question? We use tag questions in two scenarios. When you want information, como ya vimos. Or when you want someone to agree with you. Cuando están buscando que alguien esté de acuerdo con ustedes. O cuando buscan una confirmación. Tal cual. ¿Verdad? Como la que les decía. Um, you have money. Don't you? ¿Vos tenés dinero o no? Ok. No le estoy diciendo si tenés. Estoy diciendo lo vos tenés dinero uh -huh. o no. Busco confirmación. Ok. O que estén de acuerdo con lo que yo estoy diciendo. Y ahí es lo, donde lo utilizamos, los tal questions. Es bien común okay. que escuchen esto. Tal questions sí las van a ocupar bastante cuando se estén comunicando con nativos, más que todo. And then, before we do the exercise, I'm going to uh, take the attendance. Vamos a hacer un paréntesis aquí con el attendance. Porque ahora estaba cargando todas las notas de ustedes. Y hay un montón de gente que me debe la tarea 3 y la tarea 4. E incluso hay algunos que no han terminado el midterm exam. Esto va para los que están de oyentes también. Varios de los que están solo de oyentes. Um, se comprenden las circunstancias por las que se conectan como oyentes. Pero independientemente de la plataforma es un más. Sí o sí la deben completar para que en SAFORP los tomen en cuenta para darle seguimiento a su beca en el siguiente módulo. Okay. I have a question about that. Dígame. Uh, we have to finish all units or only one or two at midterm? No, ahorita estamos en la tarea. Realmente tendrían que estar esta semana entre ahora y el... What is it? Tuesday. Entre ahora y el martes tendrían que tener la tarea 3. Pero al menos la tarea 4 ya tendrían que irla avanzando. Eso se los digo no porque ya tiene que estar completa, sino porque no quiero que se atrasen. <ríe> ok, no quiero que esté en la última semana. Ah, no, le he terminado. <ríe> right? Um, oh, okay. uh -huh, just for that. Also, hay varios que no han hecho el midterm exam. Ese sí ya tendría que estar porque lo vimos la semana. Este martes, día martes, ya estamos a viernes. La mayoría de ustedes tienen muy buena nota en el midterm. Así que eso es buena señal. <laughs> but then hay cinco personas que no me han completado el midterm exam. Así que por favor, tómenlo, tómenlo en cuenta. Completen el midterm ahora por la noche. Y la tarea número dos ya tiene que estar completa. Hay cuatro personas que la deben. 
Así que sí, pongámonos las pilas para que no estemos a última hora la otra semana. Ok, atrasándonos. Teacher, for Dígame. today, what... Eh, ahora empieza... We need to be done? Entre ahora y el martes tienen que terminar la tarea 3. Y para el martes de la siguiente semana, cuando terminemos, martes 11 de octubre, ya tienen que tener la tarea 4 y el examen final. Ok. Okay. All right, let me take attendance. Please be ready. So when I say your names, give me one moment. Oh my God, les juro que no he sentido esta semana con ustedes. <laughs> Trabajan super bien. Friday the 30th. Ana Raquel Villalta. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio. Present. Thank you. Claudia María. Diana Elizabeth. Ah, Diana dice que no podía. Jorge Humberto, está de oyente. Present teacher. Thank, thank you. José Jonathan. José Rodrigo. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan de Dios Mejía. Present teacher. Thank you. Linda Ibe. Manuel Antonio. Present teacher. Thank you, María Concepción. Present. Thank you, María Elena. I'm here. Thank you, Mario Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you, Nelson Gavarrete. Norma Carolina. Present teacher. Thank you, Olga Gómez. Present. Thank you, Silvia Zuleima. Present. Thank you, Tatiana Michel. Wendy Maribel. Present. Thank you, and Christian Natalie. Present. Thank you so much. We're going to proceed with the exam, with the exercise, just a moment. I'm going to share the screen with you. And we have 10 questions. So each of you will answer one. Okay, this is multiple choice, so it should be very easy. Así que le voy a ir dando el remote control, solo me van diciendo, le van levantando la mano para irse la asignando, por favor. Ok, acuérdense, tenemos 10 espacios, so we need 10 volunteers. Le vamos levantando la mano para irlos asignando, por favor. Um, let's see. Manuel, you will have number one. Yo le voy a ir dando el control, solo déjeme que los termine de asignar. Cristia, you will have number two. Okay, and voy a asignar los demás. Um, Wendy, me ayuda con la número tres, por favor. Um, okay. Silvia Zuleima, me ayuda con la número cuatro, por favor. Luego, Norma Carolina, me ayuda con la número cinco. Olga, con la número seis, por favor. Um, María Elena, con la número siete, si puede, por favor. Juan de Dios con la número 8, Juan Carlos Rivas con la número 9 y Ana me ayuda con el número 10, por favor. Ok. Um, Manuel, le voy a dar el control ahorita o se lo selecciono yo porque dice que está el celular. Sí, sí por favor. Sí, por favor. Vaya, lea la oración y me dice la tag question que quiere seleccionar. Ok. He, he's still sleeping. Uh, isn't he? All right, thank you. Number two. You do go to the school, don't you? Correct. You do go to school, don't you? Number three. Okay, let's go for a walk. Let's go. ¿Qué pasa cuando tengo let's en una oración? ¿Cuál es mi tag? Show. Show we? Correct. Show we. Number four. We won't be late. Won't we? Ya está en negativo. ¿Cuál es el tag? Oh. Uh, we won't be late. Um, will we? Correct. Thank you. Number five. 
Nobody called it, didn't they? Nobody called any Nativa. Uh, did they? Correct. Did they? ¿Se acuerdan que les dije? Si lleva nobody o never, es negativa. Por tanto, el tal va a ser el opuesto, positivo. Ok. Number six. They will wash the car. Will it? Mm, will it es para tercera persona y esto es plural. They. Uh, won't they? Exacto. Si lleva will en la oración, el tal es en negativo. Won't. Okay. Number seven. Me. <laughs> we not lock the doors. Um, mustn't they? Mustn't we? <laughs> Correct. Thank you. Number eight. I'm right. Arena. Perfect. <laughs> Number nine. So you bought a car. Did you? Let's check on this one. Number 10. You wouldn't like to invite my dad. Would you? Would you? Okay. En esta, ¿quién la leyó? Mi teacher, Juan Carlos. Okay. Esta, yo creería que están queriendo decir, so you have bought a car. Y sería haven't you. Pero como no es el have, nos vamos a ir con esta, ¿de acuerdo? And we're going to check them. All right. So, yes. Si no tiene el have, you can go with this one. And you got a score, a score of 100, people. Very good. That tells me that you understood the explanation. <laughs> so that's good news. Esas son buenas noticias. All right, now we're going to go to the students, Manuel. Give me one moment. And if you want to review the tag questions, así bien, 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 bien resumidito, como lo más básico, aquí lo tienen en el manual. Okay? But now you're going to do a tag question. Okay? You're going to write a tag question for each of the following sentences. Because we have six sentences, I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes. Do you prefer to do it in groups or do you want to do it individually? Okay. Or do you prefer to work in groups? Okay, I'm going to open the breakout rooms. Voy a abrir las salas. Les voy a dar 10 minutos. Tienen que completar las seis. Okay. So, como van a estar en pareja, va a ser más rápido que las completen. Se las pueden repartir dos, dos, o tres y tres, right? Again, you have 10 minutes. Si tienen 10 minutos para convertirlas con la tag question, las seis que están ahí. Cuando regresemos, yo le voy a decir a cada grupo cuál me va a dar, ¿ok? Porque todos van a tenerlas todas. Las salas es... ¿Perdón? Mejor aquí le digo. All right. We're going to work in groups, Mundi, ahorita. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys 10 minutes. The rooms are open right now. Las salas están abiertas en este momento. Pueden ingresar. Tienen 10 minutos. Asegúrense de completar las 6, por favor. How is the page number? It's page 28. Página 28, page 28. Thank you. Uh -huh. Ingresen a las salas, por favor. Norma, necesito que entre la sala, por favor. La voy a mover ahorita a la sala 5. Teacher. Yes. Yo si no puedo entrar ahorita a los grupos. Why? Me saca, teacher. Ahorita, <risa> Norma. La moví en el no. número 4, Norma. 
María Concepción. Ok. Uh -huh. Vaya, está bien, entonces, si no puede, no puede. Aquí seguiría. Entonces, quizás no voy a poder ahí ponerme. Ok. Si puede completar las oraciones, hágalo para que practique, María. Y lo voy a intentar, pero que ahorita estoy digitando en Excel, entonces. ¿no? Sí, solamente si puede, realmente. Uh -huh. Vaya, pues, gracias.
Okay, now that we're back, let's begin with room number two. Room number two, teníamos a Ana Raquel, Cristia Erazo y Juan Carlos Rivas. Regálenos la número cinco y la número seis, por favor. Mm -hmm. Ok. Leen la primera y luego ya hay que contar. Ok, number five. It is, it isn't uncommon for search marketing efforts to lack strategic guidance. Eh, is it? Correct. <laughs> it isn't, is it? Very good. Number okay. six. I don't know if I really can. The first step of any search marketing strategy is planning. Uh, isn't it? Very good, guys. You got it correct. Thank you, room number okay. two. Now we're going with room number three. Tenemos a Juan de Dios y Olga Marlene. Number three and number four, please. Okay, number three. Two business appears in the first search result. Didn't your? Mm, your business appears, that simple present. Eso es presente simple. Uh, y tercera persona, it. it. Uh -huh. Isn't it? Mm -mm, no lleva el verbo to be. Es con el auxiliar do. Pero en esa tercera persona, doesn't. Ah. Uh -huh. Your business appears in the first search That's result. Your... Doesn't it? Doesn't, Doesn't it? No trabajamos con el posesivo. Las tal questions no van de acuerdo al posesivo. Las tal questions van de acuerdo al sujeto. En este okay. caso, your business es el sujeto it. Ok. Ok. Y esta fácil, esta parte que es para que se nos haga más fácil guiarnos. Si tienen una oración en presente simple afirmativa que no lleva el verbo to be ustedes saben que van a preguntar con do o doesn't con, perdón, con don't o doesn't ok, si es afirmativa presente simple a veces se nos olvida porque no las afirmativas en presente simple no llevan auxiliary, ahí se le va el verbo de acción, pero cuando yo pregunto ocupo el auxiliar don't o doesn't de acuerdo al sujeto, de acuerdo Si estuviera el verbo to be, si dijera your business is in the first search, ahí sí puedo hacer el tag, isn't it? All right. De lo it contrario. Is, yes. It is doesn't you. Uh -huh. Doesn't it? Doesn't you? It doesn't, doesn't it. it? Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Yes. And number four, please. SEO is the process of gaining presence, presence through or pay efforts. Eh, isn't it? Correct. Porque aquí tengo el is affirmative, sé que el tag es en negativo. Isn't it? Very good. Then we go with room number four. Tenemos a María Elena y Norma y Wendy. Number one and number two, please. Number one. Um, every day, millions of individuals use the internet to search for information. Um, every day, every day. Lo acabo de explicar. Uh -huh. <laughs> millions of individuals. Creo que estábamos mal entonces aquí, pero es don't, don't they? Exactly, Wendy. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Como tengo un verbo de acción en afirmativo presente, la pregunta va a ser con el auxiliar don't they or doesn't si fuera tercera persona. Millions every day use the internet. Don't they? Very good, Wendy. Number two. Number two, search marketing is divided into three main categories. Is that is it? Very good, Norma, that is correct. Si mi, pregunta, si mi oración está en negativo, yo la voy a hacer el tag en afirmativo. Is it? Very good. Y room number five teníamos a Manuel Antonio y Silvia Zuleima. Number four and number six. Please. Number four. 
Está en mute, Manuel. Ok. Number four uh, is CEO is the process of gaining presence through and trade effort. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Number six. Uh, the first step of any search marketing strategy is planning. Isn't it? Very good. Nice. Perfect, guys. It tells me that you did understand the topic. That is really good. Now, if we move forward to page 30 in the student manual, we will see two questions for exercise number one. And it says, how do you get started to become an e-commerce specialist? What qualifications are required to be a digital marketing manager? Okay, I want you to discuss these two questions. I'm gonna give you five minutes in the breakout rooms. Le voy a dar cinco minutos en las salas para que discutan esas dos preguntas. How do you get started to become an e-commerce specialist? Y la otra, what qualifications are required to be a digital marketing manager? Okay, this is in your opinion. ¿Qué cualidades, qué cosas debe saber o conocer una persona que va en esa área, right? ¿Qué pedirían ustedes si fueran a contratar a alguien? Sí. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes. Solo van a discutir esas dos preguntas, yes? What is the page? Page number 30. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Las salas están abiertas, pueden ingresar, tienen cinco minutos. Ingresemos a las salas. Norma pudo ingresar. No le aparece la ventanita. Norma le aparece. Vaya, permítame, la voy a mover, pero no la, no la acepte. Yo le voy a avisar cuando no. Ahora no.
Okay, and we're all back right now. So let's answer the questions for each group, according to each group, right? What did you discuss with your classmates? We have room number two. We had Ana, Cristia, and Juan Carlos. So how do you get started to become an e-commerce specialist? And what qualifications are there required for that position? In your opinion. Uh, in our, uh, our opinion, uh, the first question, how do you get started to become an e-commerce specialist? Uh, first, research, research the market. Uh, second, uh, do, uh, do bench marketing. And third, uh, create content marketing. Okay. Okay, and for the second question, uh, what qualification are required to be a digital marketing manager? Uh, they need to have a bachelor degree in a related file, social marketing, uh, digital multimedia, communication, website, etc. Also, they have to know English and liberal arts. All right, perfect. That answered your, the answers according to your opinion, guys. Very good job. Thank you, room number two. Now we want to hear room number three. Room number three, we have Juan de Dios and Olga Marlene, please. Okay. The Go number ahead. one. Go ahead. Go ahead, Olga. <laughs> okay. And the number one. We we accord that we agree as, that as, as step number one for uh, maybe to get a line course online course uh -huh. to be at the forefront of the knowledge. Uh -huh. To have a target client and to make a marketing study. Uh, now, number two, Juan de Dios. Okay, what qualification are required to be a digital marketing manager? A uh, marketing degree? Uh, take some courses mm -hmm. on virtual like this mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> and have uh, some experience for example uh, we will practice with our prong own pardon, sorry our own uh, e-commerce to practice and in addition, uh, we have to know about the platform for e-commerce. Exactly, very good. Those are good points, room number three. Thank you, Olga and Juan de Dios. Now we want to hear room number four. Room number four, we have Norma Carolina, Wendy Maribel, please. Okay, um, the first question, how you business, no, how do you get a start to become a, an e-commerce specialist? Mm -hmm. Specialist. Specialist. Um, they need business start advertising. A different networks and mm -hmm. apps or net or for example social media. Okay. And the second question uh, studies in digital commerce, uh, being, being creative student of different markets knowing uh, how to create a web page and, and data analysis. 
Okay. All right, thank you. And let's hear room number five. Manuel and Silvia, please. Silvia, start. In the first, um, the, the first question, um, investment, timing, money, in enough training. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, I continue. Uh, and the second, oh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, no, I, I'm going to talk. Uh, in this part, uh, uh, firstly, and the second second one question, mm -hmm. uh, I consider uh, the uh, the qualifications uh, are required because uh, this uh, this part uh, of the uh, digital marketing involve or uh, like a uh, website, a uh, social media, uh, this this person needs to uh, need to have enough knowledge about the the firstly uh, market uh, local marketing, mm -hmm. and then and then to expand for uh, the internet. Exactly. Very good. Room number five. Good job. Now, I feel really, really offended that nobody mentioned one of the requirements and qualifications is to learn English. <laughs> you have to speak English for marketing. Yes, well, yes. <laughs> ningún grupo mencionó eso aquí. <laughs> I missed yeah. it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But yes, it's actually really important. Um, and let me tell you a story. I have another student in a different class. Um, she's a digital, how do they call it? Designer, digital designer. Diseño gráfico, no, she's a graphic designer. She's a graphic designer, she, she graduated from the university and she did have a good job. A few, like up until last two years ago, she did have a pretty good job. But then the pandemic came and they 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 let her go, right? Um, they fired her, they despidieron. So when she was looking for a new job as a graphic designer in marketing, Everybody noticed, she noticed that every every company was asking in the requirements that she has to be bilingual, right? It's not enough to have a university degree, university degree, you gotta be bilingual, right? Also, if you don't want to work for a private company, you can work freelance, right? Hay plataformas donde hay trabajo para freelancers de todas las profesiones. El único requisito es que hablen inglés y que manejen su profesión, right? Y pueden trabajar como freelance con salarios desde 15, 20 dólares por hora, right? You decide which one you take. So yes, it is a complimentary study learning English. Now, let's go with exercise number two, building vocabulary. Okay, you're going to label the descriptions with the correct name of the job. So we need six volunteers for this. Ocupamos seis voluntarios. Each of you is going to read the sentence and you're going to search which is the correct title. Okay. Van a leer la descripción y van a buscar cuál de estos títulos es el que le queda a cada descripción. Okay. I need six volunteers. Yes. Levanten la mano, necesito seis, seis voluntarios para asignarlos ahorita. Let's see. We have Christia, you will be number one. Wendy Maribel, you will be number two. Manuel Antonio, you will be number three. Silvia, you will be number four, please. Silvia, you will be number four. Okay, vuelvo repito. Silvia, you will be number four. Um, Ana, si me puede ayudar con la número cinco, por favor. 
Y María Elena, si me ayuda con la número 6, por favor. Let's begin, pues. I'm thinking, Miss. <laughs> An individual who builds, grows, and manages online communities. Manages. Manages, manages mm -hmm. online communities. We have data analyst, content manager, web designer, chief digital, web manager, community manager. It's difficult mm -hmm. because content manager and community manager are similar to number one, right? The description is kind of similar, right? Yes. It, and this I one says think... an individual who builds... Uh, so okay. he has to build the community, he grows the community, and he manages the community. I think community manager. Okay, we're going to go with community manager number one. Let's read number two, please. Okay, this job is mainly related relate to the styling and layout. Layout. Or layout, layout of page, pages with content included text and images. Mm -hmm. Me with the same. This job is related to the styling and layout of pages with content including text and images. And you said web designer when? Mm -hmm. Or which one did you say? What do you have? Web designer. Web designer. Okay, good. Let's go with web designer number two. Let's read number three, please. Okay. This person collects, processes, and performs statistical analysis of data. Mm -hmm. uh, I consider data analyst. Yeah, I think the word data gives us the clue. We're very good. They collect it, they process it, and then do analysis, right? With the data. Thank you. Number four, please. Someone who supervises the content present on website and blog. I consider web manager. Um, let's see. Someone who supervises the content presented on websites and blogs. Web manager. Okay. Let's go with number five, please. Okay. An individual who helps a company grow by converting traditional businesses to digital ones uh, is chief the digital officer. Very good. That is correct. Thank you. And number six, please. A person in charge of developing, managing, managing, and maintaining, maintaining websites. Maintaining websites. Maintaining websites. Chief mm -hmm. Digital Officer. Mm, eso es lo que va a ser Ana en el número 5. Um, content manager. Content <laughs> manager. Uh, content manager. Um, pero veamos si está bien o oh, estaría okay. con community um, Christian dijo la manager. Uno. <laughs> che, dígame. I think uh, the, the content manager is um, uh, is two. Number two. Writing text images. Okay, para la número dos, habían dicho que era web manager. No, web designer. Web designer. Ah, web designer, okay. So number two, dice Ana, que podría ser uh, content manager. This job is related to styling and layout of pages with content, including text and images. Ustedes dicen que podría ser content manager. Entonces la seis sería web designer. Developing, managing, and maintaining okay. websites. Yes, Ana, it makes more sense. Yeah. Tiene más sentido como lo está leyendo, Ana. What do you think, guys? Do you agree? Yes, because in Spanish, a content manager is a, a, a contenido. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. the one that he generates the content, right? Like a blogger or something. So it's related to styling and layout. It could be, it makes sense to me. Very good. Okay, we're gonna finish with this one. I'm just gonna take attendance one more time. Vuelvo y repito, traten de trabajar o de avanzar lo más que puedan en la plataforma, aun si no estamos, ahora, si es un tema que no hemos visto, de las tareas, llega un tema que no hemos visto, pues no la hagan hasta que lo veamos, de acuerdo, pero los que no, los que no han hecho el midterm exam, por favor, terminenlo lo más pronto posible, igual los que me deben la tarea 1 y 2, por favor, la completan, esto va sobre todo para los que están como oyentes, necesitamos que se pongan al día con la plataforma. Vamos a pasar attendance, number one, Ana Raquel. Present. Thank you, Carlos Antonio. Present. Thank you, Claudia María. Diana Elizabeth, no va a estar. Jorge Humberto is listener. Sí. José Jonathan. José Rodrigo. Present teacher. Thank you, Juan Carlos Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you, Juan de Dios. Present teacher. Thank you, Linda y Ben. Manuel Antonio. Present. Thank you, María Concepción. Present. Thank you, María Elena. Present. Thank you, Mario Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you, Nelson Gavarreta dijo que estaba de oyente. Norma Carolina. Present teacher. Thank you, Olga Marleni. Present teacher. Thank you, Olga. Silvia Suleima. Present. Thank you, Tatiana Michel. Wendy Maribel. Present. Thank you, and Christian Natalie. Present, Miss. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Rest, recharge batteries. And we have the last week, next week. Así que. Recarguen baterías, los veo el otro lunes. Cuídense. Mm -hmm. Good night. Thank you. Enjoy over the weekend. Bye. Enjoy bye. as well. Bye bye. <laughs> Blessings.